Welcome to Challenger Insight. Azir against LeBlanc. I will be explaining everything I'm doing and skipping over the useless part. So, how do you deal with LeBlanc? Now, keep this in mind. In a one verse one scenario, you will always win. You out trade her, you have lower cooldowns, you have better push and damage. The problem is that if you trade with LeBlanc and go deep, you don't have a way to return. But she does, so that means that if the enemy jungler is there, you are going to be in a big trouble. So always think about behind every single trade you are doing with LeBlanc, that the enemy jungler is going to camp your ass really hard. And I'm serious guys, every single trade you do, you always think, is the jungler here or not? Now, you still, there are two ways you can play. Either you will keep pushing and forcing the enemy jungler to come to you, and you will just outplay them, you will have better map awareness and you will escape all their ganked attempts. Because remember, LeBlanc will get outscaled eventually at around 10 minutes to 20 minutes. She won't be able to do anything unless she snowballed really hard on you. Now, I will put a ward here to avoid Charmless level 2 gank. Usually I would put it where on the other side of the map, on the top side river, because Charm would start red buff, but now I see that he's starting blue buff and my team is starting their red buff. That's why I put this way. Now look, you always want to trade with LeBlanc evenly. So if she jumps in, just make sure you do as much damage as you can. Proc the electric good if she does so and you will always win the trade while also having the push. Now remember, I can't stress this enough. Map awareness and gank avoidance is your role in this game. Now look, I put the soldier there. If you only trade one W against your auto attack W, you will lose. So that was a mistake on my part, but it's okay. I'm still winning on the push here. I will miss my Q, which is, which is something I shouldn't do. But as you can see, despite doing two mistakes already, I'm still winning. Now look, I don't, I'm not afraid, and I again trade evenly, and I'm winning. LeBlanc is not a champion that wins lanes one one versus one. It's really difficult to do so. Because remember, her W cooldown is extremely long, and her W is everything. If she doesn't have it, she will be really useless. So every trade, every single move she does, wave clear, trading, escaping, setting up ganks, everything revolves around her W. So always keep her cooldown in mind. It's 18 seconds rank 1, and goes all the way down to 10 seconds at rank 5. So, still... Let's talk about something really important I'm doing right now is I'm standing to the top side of the map if you haven't noticed. And why I'm doing this is because I know that Charon is in bot side. That means that if Charon ganks me, he will gank me from bottom lane, from bottom side of the river. Now, by standing closer to top side, I'm also closer to my jungler. So it, look, I dodge the chain and I'm ready to move. Let's move back a little bit. So, if you look at LeBlanc's HP, my full combo will kill her with Electrocute for sure, but I know that my primary role is to avoid ganks, and this is such an obvious gank. I also know that Lee Sin is going to gank top lane right here. If that means that I will not have cover from Lee Sin and it will be a 1 vs 2. So, yes, I would kill LeBlanc. But I've definitely died to the Jarvan as well. And that's just not worth it. You want to waste their time. And that's all you do. Because you outscale. Now imagine if I was standing here. To the bot side of the map. It's really hard to avoid the Jarvan combo. But because I'm standing to the correct side of the map. To the top side. It will be much harder for them to approach. Now. Whenever LeBlanc goes in. Your priority is always first dodge her chains. So look. Let's... Play a bit. Next frame. Now, dodge the chain. And then see what's happening. If you can E into her at this moment, you will win the trade. You will see it later. But because I don't know where the jungler is, I play it safe. If she would hit the chain here, I immediately drift away or even flash if necessary. If she doesn't hit the chain, I will wait for her to return to the distortion before using my Q. But... Since I see the jungler, I will immediately decide to just run away. And this is completely fine. So, this is the objective we wanted to do. Working great. And unlike Rise, I played it well. 
and survive the gank. So the reason why this Wukong will be getting so fed and will be really strong later in the game, while LeBlanc won't be, is because I was able to avoid the gank this way. Now, this looks kind of hard that I'm slightly losing my lane, which is not true because I'm still winning in CS, but I have less HP, less mana. I really want to go base here, but it's not a problem. Remember, even if you go 20 CS down and you're 0, 0, 0 and LeBlanc is 0, 0, 0 as well and you're equal levels, you won. At 15 minutes, you will absolutely dumpster her. And even now, I'm winning hard, so patience is everything. Trading with the junglers in mind. Now, a uh, very unfortunate thing will happen. Lee Sin is losing really hard. Jarvan will survive thanks to the Triumph and W, and it's just gonna get me killed as well. LeBlanc is 2-0 now. My wave in the mid lane is horrible, but still, I will be able to come back into the game alone. I won't really help have more help from my teammates but you will still see me winning so i use my priority to put down vision that's the first thing you should always be thinking about especially when your playstyle is to push or you want to be aggressive first thing you do with your priority is to secure vision because then for the next few minutes you will be able to play without being worried about the jungler so let's talk a bit about trading against the blank now LeBlanc maxes her W and it's literally all of her damage. The thing is, Azir has enough range to outrange her W, so this is step number one. Always stay outside of the range of her W. Look, I'm still outside of the range of her W, poking her a little bit. If she wants to walk in, make sure that you have the soldier in. And now, I know that Charon was top lane, that's why I E into her and as you can see, she gets absolutely demolished in the trade. Look, auto attack, E into her. That will make her miss the chain and then i can continue like this but do this only if you are sure where the enemy jungler is or that you have cover because as i said if the enemy jungler is there you're doomed now back to trading if leblanc has to use her you want to make leblanc use her w Again, I saw Jarvan top so i in you see i will eat electrocute and her e and i still didn't trade so this is the worst way I could play the trade and I still win. I just want to show you how easy this matchup is in 1 vs 1. So stay outside of her W range. That means that she has to use it to gap close. And then the second way she does her damage is through procking her Q. Sigil of Malice. So her Q will mark you and any other spell she hits on you will detonate the bomb, let's say. Again... I will get hit by everything, but as you can see, she doesn't do that much damage. Notice that Jarvan is in topside, and this is the same thing I was explaining before. So, put up Epic Pen. Again, I was standing to the bot side of the map, close to my jungler, and away from enemy jungler, right? If he tried to gank me. So, I was closer to get help, and I was much harder to approach. That's the biggest thing when it comes to avoiding ganks. Now, that's why it's... All always important to stay outside of the range of her W and then dodge the chain because that will mean that she does literally zero damage. Now I can play a bit more aggressive because I have the cover from Lee Sin, but Galio is on the room too. I tried to bait him in with the shuffle, this was all planned, however Aftershock is a very funny rune so it will take very long time for him to die and I'm going to die again because Charvan will block my drift, but it's okay. You saw how hard I was stomping the LeBlanc before. I was basically full HP and she had 20% despite having two kills. Now she has four kills. Sounds awful, but I'm keeping up in CS. My level is almost equal to her, so no big deal. This is where we ideally want to do. Well, you don't want to die this many times, but you just want to be equal in levels and definitely rush Merc Treads first. It will help you dodge the chains and mitigate her burst. Even if she is the only AP champion in the game, especially against assassins like Arya and LeBlanc, you definitely should consider going Merc Treads first. So, now again, I'm getting the priority. Since LeBlanc has access to her ultimate now, she has two ways to use her W. This is what she will do this time. She will use her ult actually. And look, I'm not trying to hit her, I'm not trying to fight back until she uses her chains. Look, I dodge first, now I dodged, and then I keep hitting. 
You always want to keep in mind that she can return to her W or to her ultimate and you ideally want to save your Q until the moment she returns back to her pad. You don't want to use it too early. So you always make sure that you can do damage to her. Now, for the majority of the lane, I kept having the push, right? I'm still being the lane. This Ocean Drake will be a huge help. Look, I'm her W range is up to up to here. Like, like, like this. I'm standing outside. I make the soldier. I make sure that if she wants to go in, she will eat one auto attack before anything else happens. Just auto her and walk back to keep the range. And this is how you want to do it. Then you can Q if you are still out of her range. Let's continue the normal replay. And notice how whenever she moves in, I move back a little and that's fine. So now I have the Ocean Drake. That means that I can trade like an idiot. Look, I didn't know where the jungler is, right? So my first instinct, if she jumps in, jump out. Whenever you trade evenly with assassins, imagine a Zed. If Zed uses his ultimate on you and you ulti as well. Look, again, dodging the chain. Now I should have done, done one, more, one more auto attack and the Q. I don't know why I didn't. Maybe I was afraid where Charon is, but I definitely had vision on him topside. Maybe I just didn't see it in that moment. So they are going for a dive. I played as safe as I can. And what, what, I, what I was talking about is that as long as you just scale and trade evenly with them, you win because you outscale. Always keep that in mind, okay? Look, again, outside of range, it, it's really honestly impossible for LeBlanc to win. Now, look, my team was around. That's why I baited her in to go for this. I knew that she didn't have Ignite and I still had shield for my E. It was calculated. There was no way she would kill me. She jumps in and she dies. Now, I push out this wave. You always want to make sure. It's not always possible, but if you can, you want to push the entire wave before taking a reset because then... When you come back to the lane, first I will deny all these minions, okay? All of these minions will die to this tower. That means that LeBlanc will not be able to farm them. And also, I'm not going to lose anything. So, I'm taking the plate here. Let's speed it up. Reset. Take a blue reset. And walk back to lane. And as you can see... I lost maybe two minions to the tower. So, this is almost half a kill lead just because I pushed the wave in. Now, I have a blue buff. I'm in a really good situation. Look, again, dodging the chain. And she can't do anything. Right now, my vision is kind of poor. That's why I'm sticking to top side of the river, because I have the ward right here. But now, because I have the priority, and I see Jarvan in bot lane, I feel safe to go and clear this vision away. Now, look at this. She has four kills, okay? I'm 0-2. I only have Mercs, some daggers, and just by using my E, I completely out-trade her. Now, I should also check the ward that was there. I don't, so it's fine. Just take note. Now, she if you see a purple thing on you, or anything that she does and is purple, that's her ultimate. And rank 1, the cooldown on her ultimate is 1 minute cooldown. Without any cooldown reduction, okay? So through the range, through the poke, and staying, controlling my wave and avoiding ganks, I was able to build a 30 CS lead. I just want to stress that this LeBlanc is not a terrible player by any means. She's Diamond 2, LeBlanc main 64% win rate with her. So yeah, if it works against this guy, it's definitely going to work against LeBlanc that's worse than you. Again, I don't know how many times I said it, but behind every trade, always think about the possibility that there's a jungler and then trade accordingly to that. Now, do you see how much vision control they have for on every single side of the map? It's much harder for me to play here than it looks because her team is somewhat winning. But it's all right. I can move up a bit because Lee Sin is around. I will walk for a plate and now I should be walking back with the prio securing vision. I see that Wukong is fighting, but I already know he's dead, so I don't decide. I just decide to cheat LeBlanc here, but let's talk about this a little bit, okay? Because this is something you can apply so much more in your games. Wait, like this, okay? So imagine you are LeBlanc. Your team is fighting in the topside river. 
and Azir is moving before you. Okay, you are little blank. Now, he goes into fog of war, like this. And what do you do in this situation? Imagine Wukong was fighting evenly and the Jarvan was... Yeah, he's dying and the Rice is dying too. And there's a serious chance that Azir would go there and turn the fight. Well, if you're LeBlanc in this situation, you're just going to spam that Azir is missing all over the river. And also, maybe you will face check because you are so desperate. It will force people to panic. And what you can do is you don't really have to roam. I mean commit to a big roam let's say you don't have to go all the way sometimes it's just enough to hide in the brush enemies will already start spamming like crazy so it's the same effect almost as if you came there because they have to respect it half of the time they do half of the time they don't but the thing is you're still so close to your lane that you don't lose anything and you can also cheese the enemy so imagine i'm an Ari or some kind of assassin i go hide here leblanc just face checks and i completely dumpster her win the trade and force her out of the lane i'm azir and i will still be able to do that so look i know that the fight is over so i don't decide to continue but she doesn't know that she's afraid she wants to help the german with scuttle the one fast combo and this just this little thing won me the lane at this moment okay she has no hp i will be able to push i know that Jarvan wasn't very healthy so i'm not very afraid of a gank and now i keep pressuring i have my drift up and it's fine now what will happen now so notice that her ultimate always mimics the last spell she used now she used her e so her ultimate right now is e that means that she can't run away her w will be on cooldown that's why i know that I can go in and kill her very easily she doesn't have flash i went for an overkill here because i wasn't sure it's all right to secure her but i didn't have to I didn't have to use my ultimate or I didn't have to use my ignite. It would be better to save my ignite and use my ultimate because the cooldown is lower. But still, kill is a kill, right? So, remember. If she uses a different spell after her uh, W, then she won't be able to use a second W in the form of her ultimate. Now, this was 4-1 or 4-0 LeBlanc, just absolutely fed. I was getting camped. I got one gank from my team she got about four to five ganks from charvan pressuring my lane now i shouldn't be walking mid lane now now it's fine because the wave in the bot lane is way too far away but in the mid game when everyone is rotating you ideally want to be in a side lane close to the objective both teams want to play around as a mid laner because you want to have solo xp you don't want to share xp with anyone and that's why you should be in a side lane now, also by sending my... Okay, let's look. There, there will be fight. Now, let's talk about something very important. So, I see that this fight is doomed. And I immediately leave. It's the same situation as when my I try to help my Wukong before I cheese the LeBlanc. If your team is inting, but you are still doing great. You are up in farm. You are farming. It's alright. You still have a big chance to carry the game. The biggest problem is when you let your team or just the overall clown fiesta of the game drag you down. So imagine that I went to the fight there too and I died. It would be so much harder to win this game. So if the fight is over, don't just leave your teammates. I know how you feel sometimes. Oh my god, I need to help this guy. And then you both die. That's the worst thing that can happen. Don't let your team drag you down. If you feel like you can't win the fight, just... Just don't enter the fight. Keep farming. Keep farming. Have items and wait for the right moment. Because everyone does mistakes. And it's so easy to come back in this meta right now. now this ward gives them so much information. Always check the bushes when you're walking around. I made a mistake. I admit. Now, notice that Lucian is in bot lane. But your AD carry should never be in a side lane speed pushing against an assassin like LeBlanc. He's really fat and LeBlanc is really, really behind. So it's gonna work. But you want to be the one in the side lane. Gain a priority against her. Now, also look, I'm sharing experience with Blitzcrank. And that's not something you want to do as a mid laner. Again, we, I just don't check the brushes at all. Anyways, with the priority we got in the mid lane, we will roam down to the LeBlanc. And I just pick up an easy kill. 
Now, th this is really an awkward base race, but we are winning two lanes. We are, we are also a tower ahead. They still had to deal with tier one mid lane tower. And we have an Azir and Lucian. So we have two attack speed carries. We know that we can push this tower or base race much faster than they do. That's why we commit this push. Something interesting happening here. We just reset. And now, at this stage of the game, I'm 50 CS ahead, but even if I wasn't, I'm so much stronger than LeBlanc. Remember, I see the Galio here alone. I have the cover of my team. I just saw Kai'Sa top lane, Ryze bot lane. I don't hesitate to go in for the shuffle. I burned Galio's flash. It doesn't look like the big achievement, but actually it's quite big because if you think about it, Galio's flash taunt is the only way he can engage. Otherwise, he's just enabler. Now, at maximum range, I see that there are poke reload. I decide to commit. It looks like I'm going in first, but I have the cover of my team, and I also saw Galio low. Now, when there's a team fight happening, look how I'm standing at... Look, look where I am. I'm so safe from everyone, but I'm still sure that I can do damage. Just want to stay alive and do as much damage as possible. Look how much damage or what did LeBlanc do. Now, they all jump into me, but they have to overreach for me. And they completely forget about Delusion. I think uh, the program lagged. Okay. Now, if I didn't play this team fight properly, it wouldn't go this well. Also, keep in mind that this was a uh, 4v5 because Wukong wasn't with us, but it's still okay. I started the fight when I saw Galio 10 HP without any flash. So, we just pick up. Jaron jumps in, dies. Nothing really interesting to talk about. Skill and enter. I have two items. And the dragon is spawning soon. So, how would you identify where you should be? So, it's usually a side lane or a mid lane or a side lane, right? That means that means either top lane or bot lane because it's on the side from the middle, if that makes sense. And close to the objective, both teams want to play around. Right now, Baron is too strong and it's not really time for either our team or enemy team to start Baron. But the Mountain Drake, or is it Infernal? I'm not sure right now, is spawning soon. So you ideally should be here in the bot lane, push this wave out if you think it's safe, and then you rotate with your team and help them with Siege or whatever. So let's continue the replay. Again, I'm walking mid lane for no real reason. I should be bot lane right now. I shouldn't be giving LeBlanc this priority. I should already be pushing bot lane and now grouping with my team. If LeBlanc decides to fight me, I will beat her. Wukong has TP, so there, there's really no threat to me. Instead, I share my XP again with Lucian and let LeBlanc have the bot lane priority. And that is so bad. That is a big mistake I did in this game. If I wasn't sharing so much XP, right now I'm level 14. Now, the fight will start without me and the Wukong for some reason will not TP. That's not something I can influence. I shouldn't be here, I was just afraid that they would come onto me with the Kai'Sa ultimate, but it's okay. I'm not really sure what was happening in this fight. We just see that Wukong is doing a blue buff instead of TPing and I don't commit. So yeah, the, the past minute or two, what I was doing is absolutely not good. Should be grouped with my team and poking. So here, because we have good vision and I have really nothing else to do. By the way, before this happens, notice that all these minions will die to this tower. So I'm losing about a kill and level right here because I wasn't in the bot lane. And despite being so much stronger, 70 CS, okay, 60 CS up uh, on the LeBlanc, or 50 CS up on the LeBlanc, I let her win the lane because this is winning the lane. Now, it's not because he's better than me, it's just because I'm an idiot and I wasn't at the right position. It looks nice that I get the kill here, but kills are, of course, nice to have. But the most consistent way is to play with the wave. So as you can see, nobody is farming bot lane. We are just fighting randomly. This is, this will be empty fights. Just look at this fight. I stay at maximum range again. Charon goes in deep onto me. I should have been uh, flashing out here. I didn't expect LeBlanc to catch up and then I get chained. I die. But look. It doesn't matter which team wins the fight here, because n nothing is going to come out of it. So, 
This guy is dead. And then uh, again, fight, fight, fight. And look, the wave bot still keeps burning. Top wave keeps burning. And this is almost master tier on EU vest. And people still do so much clown fist that this is not how the game should be played or how you necessarily should play. See? People, there were, there were about 10 deaths in the last one minute. And nothing came out of it. Nothing. Literally nothing. So people kill each other and then they go back to the waves. This is how bad players still are. And I want to stress that you just need to farm. Farm your side lane and come to the important fights like this one. So Wukong is flanking. We are all together. I see that the fight is already over. So I decide to drift in. No problem here. Jarvan decides to end it again. I'm a bit worried about his uh, combo, but I shouldn't be. So I could have saved my ultimate. It's okay. Lee Sin might be dead, but it's four against two. They don't have a smite, and they don't have poke champions. They have champions that have to go deep into the to the Baron pit to contest. So we know that we can easily do this Baron. Just have to kill them, zone them when they come, and it's ours. Now. It's only LeBlanc here, she gets Zook and dies. We get the Baron. Nothing really interesting here. And now at this point of the game, it should be impossible for the enemy team to come back. I will just farm out this wave to get my Rabidans, then reset. Now, walk with your team. Walk with your team, stand behind your tanks and you don't have to go deep. If you look at enemy composition, the only thing they have is the Charvan combo and Galio combo. Once that's down, you can do anything you want. The rice will not get onto you. LeBlanc will die in two seconds. It's just impossible to lose. But I will make a mistake. And actually what looks like a good play. I will go too deep. Which I didn't have to. So this is the Galio combo I was talking about. That I get absolutely dumpstered by. Also the chain hits. So it's sad. We win the fight. But it wasn't really necessary. We could take it slower. And win the fight anyways. Because with my poke... With my DPS, it would be more than enough. So, right now, there will be a lot of Clown Fiesta happening. Nothing really that you can learn anything from. So, let's skip a bit. Now, we are going for the last push. Lucian face checks, gets a jump onto LeBlanc. And she dies instantly. Charon goes in again. And ults me. With the Galio. But now, as I said, I know that they have nothing. I can do a lot of damage. This guy survived. It's alright. Three inhibitors down, that means they really can't do anything. All we have to do right now is wait for the Baron. There was a fight, I want um, something interesting happening. So look how this fight happens, okay? We are fighting, and look, I'm going to move back right now. So I W, and I move right back, along with Rice. And this is the tethering I was talking about. There's no reason, because my maximum range is about to here with my Qs and everything. And Rai's range is like here. So I can always keep distance from him while also being able to attack him at all times. Now, sure, I could keep going, but imagine he had phase rush on Aftershock. He will proc his phase rush on me and he will run away. Or even his passive. So I kite back a bit. And I know because I know Rai's players, they really love to do that, right? They proc their combo. And I make him go much deeper than otherwise if I was standing here. He just would be standing here, comboed me and potentially run away. I still have my Q, I still have my E to catch up. So moving back, moving back, even if he doesn't move back is completely fine. Because I know eventually I will catch up to him and yeah, I'm just gonna annihilate him. So let's look at it again. See how I move back. Despite me, that's the one chasing... This is why I move back. Oh, it's just advanced mechanics that I wanted to explain. Three inhibs, no reason not to wait for Baron. We secure it, Charon face check, he dies. Nothing really interesting. We decide that we don't need the Baron. It's 45, we are really ahead. We have Azir. We with three inhibs. We really don't need the Baron. Now this look look how useful LeBlanc will be in this fight. So Galia goes in. Uh, look at the LeBlanc. Gets kicked. Cued by Lee Sin and she's done. So just stand with your front line against the Blanc. Siege is her weakness. She can't do anything. Remember, trade with the junglers in mind at all times. And remember, you do outscale. So thank you for watching. I hope it helped you. And see you again at next Challenger Insight.